Hey guys, Richard Rich Rebuilds here, and I wanted to talk about one of the most positively reviewed sports cars in recent history. Everyone seems to love this thing, and I'm actually in the market for a hot hatch, so I had to see what all the hype is all about. We just finished the electric Honda Beat, and the parts came in to repair the Fisker, so you'll be seeing updates on those cars as well. But in the meantime, I wanted to see what else was out there. Back to this thing. The car is insane, and the accolades that it's already won are fantastic. It made it up Pikes Peak without overheating, and it beat a plaid up Pikes Peak. It didn't just beat it. The Hyundai came out of nowhere with just six months to prepare and slaughtered a company that's had years at this. With 400 horsepower less, this car is no joke whatsoever. It has torque vectoring. You can dial on your own front and rear bias, drift modes, a million controls and settings. This thing is more fun than my cut-up Model 3 performance with track mode. I mean, everyone loves this thing. It's called the Hyundai Ionic N, and it's very cool, but is it worth selling my beloved BMW clown shoe for? Well, I guess you'll have to find out at the end of the episode. One thing I want to bring to your attention, though, before I start the review, is how many times the letter N is shown in this car. Like, guys, we get it. It's an N, but hold on a second. N, 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 N. I'm sure there's more under the car, too. But today, I'm going to review it, and by the way, I am not a reviewer by any stretch of the imagination, so I want to set your expectations to low. I know there's lots of videos of people sliding this car around a track, but Hyundai did not offer this car to me, so I have to borrow it from a dealership, so someone still owns it, so I can't get too crazy. I got to bring it back with good tires. I reviewed this same car many, many moons ago, but a lower trim level in base trim. This time, I'm doing the N, which is far, far more advanced than the regular version of the 5. It's also 15 thousand dollars more and what the n stands for who knows but you know what i do know about i do know about squarespace and i want to talk about it it has tons of web page tools to help your needs and all of these awesome page templates to match your style but you can also start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system squarespace blueprint you can choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up it's tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every device you can launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. They also offer flexible payments, make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and in eligible countries offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. Head to www.squarespace.com slash richrebuild, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions. Anyways, McGovern Hyundai in Wilmington, Massachusetts was kind enough to let us borrow their most expensive vehicle on the lot because we look like nice people. So make sure you check them out. They have a great inventory with friendly and knowledgeable staff. Again, that's McGovern Hyundai in Wilmington. Let's see if it lives up to the hype and should I sell my BMW for this bad boy? Let's check it out. Oh, he was, I don't think he knows that like we like do this and stuff, right? Right. So I think he was, it was interesting to him. He was like, let me show you how an electric vehicle works. I was like, oh, fascinating. <laughs> Never and, seen that before. <laughs> as I, as I, I just parked the Rivian out front. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, this is really cool. What are your initial thoughts so far? We've been driving for 11 seconds. What do you think? I think the seat's got really nice bolsters in the it. The seats are awesome. I mean, I have put on a couple pounds, so that could feel a No, bit. but it still feels like it, to be held by something, it feels good. <laughs> Don't. You know how to tell me twice. There's so much going on in this car. And I'm going to say this right now. And I understand Tesla's whole idea about you want to have minimalism, right? You want to have as few buttons as possible. And you want to, you know, make sure all your life choices are based off of the screen on the right that you hope nothing malfunctions on it. But coming in and seeing all these buttons, it is a little bit overwhelming. But at the same time, I... I get it. Like, I'm just not used to having all these buttons in an electric car. Like, even the Rivian, it has, let's see, there's two buttons on the wheel. Are they, like, plastic or metal? Like, they have tactile feel to it? Yeah, no, you could you could, you could, could feel them depressed and stuff. Okay. But, but there's a lot, like, seek and track and home and map and, like, I feel like this could have been a lot better integrated, like, on this screen right here. Like, this could have been here somewhere, having home, map, and search, etc. That could have been a lot easier. But, yeah, even still, like, I still... Like, I still like it. And just like anything else, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to having the just 
not even look at something, push a button, and then you know a map gets pulled up, or you go to the next track. Like track forward and back, like that should be here. It probably is here. But again, we've been in the car for a total of one minute so far, so it's, it's still pretty damn cool. Do these twist? Oh, and why are there two? You know what I mean? Like, why is there one with the ends highlighted, the other one's not? I'm sure if I push them, it'll tell me what's going on, but you have the lane keep, uh, you have the phone stuff, volume, track up and down, drive modes. Then you have the shift for an EV, which is bizarre. And then you have three stocks. You have the lights. You have this. It just looks so clunky, doesn't it? There's a lot going on. That's almost, that's, this is uncomfortably large. Like, yeah. I'm surprised it doesn't vibrate. There are two extremes. One extreme is Tesla, when you have just a screen and nothing else. And this is the other extreme, where you have every button known to man. My initial response is to do this. The first thing you get in the car. In reality, you push this button. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I'm gonna redline it, okay? I don't wanna blow the motor, so. Do it, blow it. Oh, what's the other one do? Whoa. Ooh, okay. Whoa. A lot changed on this screen. It looks like the car's broken at this point. This is what I normally see when, when I, I start the McLaren up. Every yeah. light is on. I'm assuming this is like the performance gauge mode. It has the uh, front motor temp, rear motor temp, battery. The, no. The pop and crackle. This is... pop and bang. <laughs> this has an automatic pop and bang tune built into it. That is insane. I really hope that no one on the outside can hear this. Yeah, that's true. If there's an external speaker, like this is <laughs> this is not gonna work. Remember the i8 had that. The i8 had that and it wasn't, um, it didn't sound great, but they, they tried their best. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. That's, yeah, okay, what, yeah. What's, what's evolution? That sounds like a pissed off tiger. I kind of like that one too. It has Lime Rock Park. It has all the. Oh. That's insane. Wait a minute. That's actually Watkins Glen. That's a cool one. That's a fun track. Oh, the different. Oh, the yeah. Different cause... layouts too. What's most impressive about this is that Hyundai was never centrally known for making high performance vehicles. Yes, they had some performance lines, of of course. But this is like a serious competitor now. Yeah. Because Tesla has had like all these years to like activate a lot of these features and listen to feedback from people. And Hyundai just came out of nowhere and said, yeah, okay, we have that now too. I mean, the fit and finish is good and, and it's not bad, but I mean, no, it's, it's not a plasticky it, stuff. It, but it feels very plasticky, but you know what? But that's there's, everything today, right? But there's, but there's no like real panel gaps. Like this material is like, that's like recycled tires, I'm sure, out of yeah. like some Korean tires. Things are in a weird place, like parking, Distance sensors, that's kind of an interesting place to put it. I thought it'd be more up here or something like that. But like if I put my, yeah, you could easily rest your hand on that and then that would that go away. But other than that, man, like this is this is the it's in terms of an attempt to make a performance vehicle, I mean in my opinion, they kind of knocked it out of the park here. The back of the seats are nice. And there's decent room back here too. There's phone chargers. We we are two adult men. And we're fitting back here pretty decently. Look at that. We don't normally sit in the back. Together. We don't know. No, not normally. But this, I mean, in a I'm, parking lot. imagine this being no. an Uber. This isn't a bad Uber ride. That's not. Well, you know what? I'm not that tall. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Average height, I would yeah, say. Yeah, you're average. Not average. that tall. Yep. So five foot eight and a half. Yep. Oh, oh, look at this though. Oh, they, oh. I don't know what. Oh. Wait a minute. Does what? mine do that? Mine yeah. does not do that. No way. Really? Does yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, reach, reach right in there. <laughs> There you go. Where do you want? Why oh, do you mine, want, oh, mine does it. Why do you want that to happen? You know why? For more back storage in the trunk. Oh. Sometimes you need more trunk space than human space. Yeah. This is. That's it. This is like a Spirit Airlines. This is. No, no, no. Uh, Spirit does not recline. Do they recline no, on Spirit? Okay, I was no. gonna say. What's what, what Spirit do you fly on? Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't. And look at this. There's actually a lot of room back that, here. That is pretty. That is. I mean. There's a ton of room here. Yeah, there is. This is actually really good for space. This is, this is surprisingly big on the inside, right? 
Huh? There's yeah. no Franck. Yeah, I know. I too this was surprised. It looks like an ice engine. I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's why they gave you so much room in the rear. Because there's, there's nothing up front. So what's junk in the trunk? Even Tesla managed the way uh, to have a frunk in their performance models. And this is a rather large battery, but you know what I could appreciate? I could appreciate this being a normal-ish battery. Tesla has, it's like three AA batteries you put in your back pocket. So I'm pretty sure you could actually go to the dealership or be on the road somewhere and have reasonable expectation that you could find a replacement battery for one of these. Okay, so now we're in, I'll tell you, the, the letter N in front of everything gives me a really tingly feeling. Why? It's just, it's just really like N race, like, N, you know what I mean? Race, N pedal, N drift optimizer. Mm. It just, it just feels odd to me. Mm. Okay, that sounds cool. It does, but, yeah. we, didn't, but we didn't go very fast. No, I don't want it on, ready? Sure. Monica! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Did you feel that? Yes, that shift feeling? I feel like a kid driving this thing. All right, so. Oh, you hear the downshift. You hear the downshift. Right, so I'm gonna turn left now. <laughs> that feels That's so weird. That shift felt, yeah. That it is, felt real, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. That was, okay, <laughs> okay. Okay, you did it, that is very cool. That's yeah. a great end mode. I want I want you to feel it. Uh, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna shift manually. Yeah. Let's go to. F oh, the down. Do you think that just turns the regen on harder? I don't know what it does. Maybe it just cuts the motors out. Yeah. But it, it that felt real. Like if I wasn't. Like if the car wasn't. So quiet. Like if I was listening to the radio, and I was just jamming out and I was going through gears, like I would have thought that was real. Yeah. That is amazing. I will say one thing though. Acceleration wise, and maybe there's a different mode. That, that's this is super end mode. Oh, I don't know if you can say that. Uh, I, that's, that's very uncomfortable. So this this super end mode where it's highlighted. It didn't feel. I can't say that. I, well, no, I think you. I think well, Hyundai made it okay. Yeah. They they gave they gave everyone the card apparently to say that. You know what I mean? It'll let you hold the gear as long as you want. And then ready, watch, shift. Do you, how do you think the performance is compared to the i8? To the i8? Yeah. Oh, it's not even close. The i8 was, it was a dog. This is, I mean, this is fully electric, 600 horsepower. The i8 had, I think 360 on like a really, really good day with like another Model S pulling it pretty yeah. much. Feels cool, Josh. Yeah. I want you to drive it. Doesn't that feel cool? That does feel cool. That feels awesome. That that got me. This is this is a a really good execution of like I said before, a gateway in between gas and electric. The only problem is the price. This is the literal only problem with mm. this vehicle is the price. I think the price is insane. If, well, the base one he said was what forty four or something like that. No one wants that one. You want you want the N. Yeah. The N's the that letter, I it's just something about it. Let's switch off. I don't know what it is, man. Like Sound. have the N. Like it just feels like it doesn't feel right. So the funny thing is, uh it when I got into the car, the the guy at the dealership said, you know, we already have it on hip hop nation. I am not making this up. <laughs> I didn't did <laughs> I change any of this? You did not change it. I don't wanna really delve too far into that. I don't yeah. wanna think about it too much. But he said those two things to me. Yeah. <laughs> he said it is already in Hip Hop Nation. Edit N mode widgets. This, the letter N must be in this car a lot. I think that's the main reason why I wouldn't purchase it, because that. And, oh, and last thing, N pedal. <laughs> N race. That's Imagine the, that, yeah. Yeah. See, I don't, it, this just seems really, really yeah, strange. They had like a regen feature that was like N. It's powerful. It actually almost sounds more motorcyclish. It does, like, yes. I had a Gixxer 750. You rode bikes? I didn't know you rode a motorcycle before. I've done a little bit of everything. Really? You never asked. Okay, that's um, true. I, I don't generally like to talk to people about what's going on in their personal lives, true. so that's a good point. That is true. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, it feels like feels very much snappy like, like a motorcycle engine. Mm. It feels good. It you know I it, like the it, driving does, experience. Does it not honest. fool you? It kind of fools you in a little way into thinking it's actually making that noise. It's yeah. doing a pretty good job of it. Oh now we're yeah now we're talking. This is the car I want. Let's see if they that looks amazing. What do you think? Who's driving this car? What do you mean? Who, what do you mean? Who's driving the car? I don't know. What, 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 does, do that, what does that mean? I don't, um, Are you like what profession do they do? Or do yes. for work? Yes. 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 Uh, probably a finance manager at a bank. You think so? I would say. Yeah, that definitely looks like finance manager. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Well, what were you thinking? Finance manager. It's also very quiet. It's extremely quiet. Once, yeah, you once you take it off that noise mode. That's it, what N stands for. It's and for noise mode, yeah. It sounds the NVH is just as good as like any other EV. It's very quiet. <laughs> Do you launch? So ready. So can I? I don't think I can launch. Oh, oh ready, 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 ready. <laughs> Monica. <laughs> <laughs> it, it steps on the brake. It's it's crazy. It gives you that like gas engine feel, you know, with that like throttle drop for a second. Yeah, it, it simulates you losing losing power because of the transmission. It simulates like you know like drivetrain losses to the transmission. I would rather have this over a Model Three if it was free, <laughs> uh, because it costs so much money. Yeah. Uh, I think if I would probably end up if if I was in the market for an electric vehicle right now, an electric sports sports car, sporty car, and both of these were side by side, I would have a hard time spending the extra premium for this. However, if both options were given to me at no cost, I would definitely pick pick this one for sure. So I'm just gonna put it in shift mode. Ready? So first gear, DSG fart. DSG fart. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you know, you know what that tells you? That tells you that sound and feedback are incredibly important. You know, everyone has been talking about this car and how it gives you the sound and the feedback that people have been missing out of EVs for a very long time. But it shows you that something is in fact there. A lot of people have purchased this or these cars already, and they absolutely love them. And I, I, I'm starting to see why. Oh look, there's a there's a base model over there. See the base model? Oh. I want to. I enjoy pulling next to the base model yeah. to say this could have been you. <laughs> <laughs> that is. How is that not cool? Yeah. It's right. It's cool. Not one. No, but do you think you'd pick up more chicks in this car compared to a Model 3? Oh, good point. You know, that's... Oh my gosh, what a question. This Model 3s, and this is a known fact, they're very curvaceous vehicles. There, there we go. Oh, yeah. But they're extremely feminine. They're very feminine. They're small, they're curvy, they're not aggressive looking. All my favorite features. Not a, yeah, right? There are, But you can't... Engage. For feminine things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they're small, like they're they're very they're non-threatening. Uh, they're they're curvy and like they're cute. And the front end looks like a frog. Like they're not they're not a grand, they're not very masculine cars. This is a known fact. So like what most men will do is they'll change the wheels, they'll they'll wrap it a different color to pretend it's a different car, but it's not. Uh, this one is more like a performance hatchback. And I think what might turn some people off is the branding. Seeing like the Hyundai badge on it might turn some people away. Uh, and they'll just think it's one of those like throwaway cars. So I really don't know. Back in like 2006, I never would have owned a Hyundai, ever. Yeah. But now they make a lot of cars where I'm like, all right. A Hyundai Excel, like you'd pay like two grand for it. And then when you're done with it, you sell it for a grand and you call it a day. Like a Hyundai Excel, Hyundai Accent, those cars are just like, you don't want these. But now 
look how far they've come. Now they're competing with real people and they have real designs too. Like the designs of these cars now are, are second to none. Like they feel great, they look great. I don't know, man. This is, uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud for how far they've come. I think they slightly missed the mark when it comes to uh, the, the pricing. But other than that, man, this is... I mean, what price point would make this more attractive? Like if it was 56 or would it have to be in the 46 range? I think 56 would make it more attractive because you got to think that, you know, the Model 3, I think it's, uh, having it just slightly below the price point of a Model 3 performance because remember, Hyundai's at, at this current moment aren't really known for that level of prestige just yet, which is why they come with their Genesis brand. I think if it was just uh, placed or priced right below the Model 3 Performance, showing, hey, you know, you can get a lot of car for your money, which is what Hyundai was known for. Now they're kind of they've kind of placed themselves on average. Like this is this is kind of what you'd expect a car like this to cost. Yeah. Whereas before you'd get a Hyundai Accent or a Hyundai whatever for dirt cheap, placing it right under an actual Honda. This is kind of up there in terms of pricing. So if they reduce the price a little bit, I think this could be a, a real showstopper. Man. The only competitor close to it, I would say, is a Model Three, because. That's really it. I mean, the Audi e-tron is like what 90 Don't get me started. but if you wait a week it'll be back down to 50. Don't get me started on the e-tron. I sold my e-tron for $35,000. Okay. I, I, I didn't want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I sold it for $35,000 and that was a deal of the century. Yeah. I, I kept asking people who wanted it. No one wanted it. I sold it to a guy and he loves it. He drives it every day. He hasn't had a single problem with it. So you guys Except should, every time he turns on the heat A piece of rice pops out Besides of that Besides you know Rice running around the door carts he, he he loves the car So you guys lost out um, So thank you for not buying the car Anyways But yeah no I think if it was like A price right below it It would have been great Just to show people This is a bargain However In my opinion Let's just ignore uh, What vehicle and what brand If these were two anonymous boxes and you look at the specs for each one, I think that people would probably choose this over the Absolutely, model. yeah. I really do think so. There are a lot of Model 3 people that enjoy upping the performance of their cars, right? They enjoy, you know, they wanna lower it, they wanna put this stuff on it, they wanna do all these visual things, they wanna add a better, uh, a better braking system, big brakes, they wanna add uh, new coilovers. Uh, you know, hot rodding Model 3s is the thing. Uh, performance, you can't do much about it, but handling, they could do a lot. And I think this is a great car for that. I, I could see people online saying, okay, well, what settings do you have? What are the ideal settings for performance on the track? What are the ideal settings here? And to watch this car absolutely ace Pike's Peak and for the Teslas to not really make it out so well, it shows you this is a serious performing vehicle, so. My one concern at a track day with any EV car, and I haven't done one yet with an EV, mm -hmm. is that, so when I take my car to the track, I drive it, I bring extra fuel. Yeah. I feel, now I do trailer my car there. Oh, okay. So fancy, I'm, a, I'm a little bougie, pants. but it is, uh, yeah. uh, but if you were to go, I mean, how many tracks have a charging station? So do you drive there a couple hours, charge it up fully and then I mean I guess there's usually waves where you'll go 20 minutes and you'll then the next driving that. group will go so yeah. maybe between those you're you're charging and maybe it's not a problem right. if if they are I mean I don't know I'm thinking of the chart the the tracks up in this area do they have well some some tracks have superchargers that are pretty close by okay so I talked to a few friends of mine and um, what they'll normally do is they'll normally come off track uh, charge a supercharger for X amount of time and they'll go back on the track. Or sometimes they'll have, if they know there's gonna be an EV performance track day, they'll bring their massive generators there and they'll uh, and they'll plug the cars in during the cool down laps. Okay. So, but yeah, you, you can get a decent amount of laps out of the car uh, before you're, it's fully depleted. But I mean, knowing myself, if I really wanna, you know, wind out the day, I'm not gonna, I mean, our nearest decent track is a couple hours away. Right. So that's the problem. If you leave your house fully charged before you get to the track you have to charge, 
uh, then you have to go on the track and then during breaks, you should probably charge again because the lower your state of charge, the worse performance is gonna be. Well, it's probably just like with anything, it's just pre-planning some of the stuff. Right. Like, you know, my friends, they take their cars, that have race fuel, so they've got a plan. All right, can I go buy race fuel on the way? Usually right. you can't find it. Can I buy it at the track? But with this, um, you know, hey, I just gotta leave an extra 20 minutes early, make sure there's a, a charger in that area. So now it's in a different performance mode where you don't feel the shift to the next gear. It just makes the sound. You notice that? Yeah. It didn't do the cut. I do kind of like that because it does get a little tender on the back. It does. We yeah. are, and, we and are and aging. There's no, there's no easy way to do it too, unless you, I don't know if it's set to old man mode. <laughs> uh, yeah, old man mode where like you have to like be at the right RPM to be into a good gear, uh, to get into a good gear confidently. But it's just really, it's just so interesting. Oh, if you hold the downshift button. Let me see if it, if it does it this time. Hold on. Oh, that was not as aggressive. Okay. Would you buy one of these? I, so I've got three kids. Yeah. So it does have ample space to put kids in the back. Ample's a tough word. Yeah. Supple space. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, ample, it's, it's okay. This is a hot hatch, remember? Yeah. It's not exactly a, uh, you know, a, a huge luxury SUV. So there are some downsides to it. But would you, would you consider this as an option? I would. Yeah. I would, if I had, you know. Just 70 grand laying around? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, for 70 grand, I'd probably get a couple-year-old M3, M4. Yeah, so you take the track. Um, but in saying that, like, it depends on what my date, my job is commuting to. If I had to commute somewhere and I'm, hey, I'd rather not spend the money on fuel, mm -hmm. maybe I would think about it because obviously spending on a M3 or an M4, you're putting premium fuel, which is over $4 a gallon. Yeah commuting it's say 35 45 minutes to work mm -hmm. and the reality is like how especially in these neighborhoods that we drive in around here like you can't really get on it no you really can't we just drove for 20 minutes in a 25 mile an hour speed zone this isn't like the fisker there's no guy that comes up and hey says, thanks for buying this car sorry about that sorry about the car not working <laughs> and everything but i got your money <laughs> it just stops sorry about we have no parts Guys, I'm going on my nature walk right now. It's been exactly one week after I drove the Hyundai Ioniq N for the first time. And I have to say, I will be selling the BMW clown shoe for the Hyundai Ioniq. Uh, the BMW clown shoe is officially for sale. One thing I wanna say about the Hyundai Ioniq N, it definitely made me feel like a kid again. I laughed, I smiled, I giggled. Uh, Josh and I had a great time. Shout out to Josh uh, and McGovern Hyundai uh, for letting us use their car uh, for that few hours. And when I drove the clown shoe for the first time, I didn't quite exactly have that same excitement. Uh, it's great because it's a driver's car, it's manual. Uh, you feel very connected to the road. But for me, I always felt that it was underpowered, severely underpowered. Uh, I had ideas of putting a supercharger on it. And uh, then I drove a supercharged one and I was still kind of underwhelmed with it. I don't think it's the kind of car that you should supercharge the inline six. For some reason, I didn't really enjoy the driving experience as much. I feel bad for saying that in a way. You know, at the end of the day, while it's a great driver's car, it is a 25-year-old BMW, and I think it's time for a change. When uh, when friends and family come into town, it's a car that I can't exactly give to people. The clown shoe, most people in my family actually don't know how to drive manual, so it's a car that kind of sits there until I'm ready to drive it. And uh, truth be told, after that video was made uh, two years ago about restoring that that BMW clown shoe, that that BMW has actually been sitting ever since then. I haven't touched it since then. So it's the kind of car I don't really see myself driving much in the future. Again, I have the 911, the 720. I'm very lucky to have those things. The clown shoe was just unfortunately something I didn't drive as much. One of the reasons why I do feel extra bad about it is because one of my last manual cars that I own, the last manual vehicle that I own is a Corvette C6 Z06. So the clown shoe is going to be probably the second to last one that I have. Fun fact, I actually have more manual EVs than I have gas cars. I have more manually shifted EVs than I have manually shifted gas cars, which is a crazy place to be at this point. But uh, I had a really good time with the BMW uh, Z3 Coupe. It was great. 
uh, while I had it, while I drove it, didn't really drive it as much. Again, it sat for two years, but I think the Hyundai Ioniq, if it's anything like the Rivian, which I put, you know, 40,000 miles on already, and 40,000 miles in two years might not seem like a lot, but I'll tell you that I have several other cars to drive. So for me to put that many miles on a single vehicle with all the other cars I have to drive, that's absolutely amazing, I think. So it's for sale. Drop me an email at uh, richrebuilds at gmail.com if you're interested. Again, it's a 99, has about 150K on it. Uh, I'm hoping to get somewhere in the, uh, the low 20s or shoot me an offer, look it up, see what they're worth. Uh, but other than that, I'm excited to start the Hyundai journey and stay tuned for the electric Honda Beat as well as the repairing of the Fisker. I'll see you guys next week.